a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Ex Machina, Film Ex Machina is a 2015 science fiction thriller film written and directed by Alex Garland and stars Donald Gleason, Alicia Vikander, and Oscar Isaac. The film follows a programmer who is invited by his CEO to administer the Turing test to an intelligent humanoid robot. Made on a budget of $15 million, the film grossed $36 million worldwide and received critical acclaim. The National Board of Review recognized it as one of the 10 best independent films of the year and the 88th Academy Awards honored the film. With the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects, for artists Andrew Whitehurst, Paul Norris, Mark Williams Ardington, and Sarah Bennett. Garland was also nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, while Vikander's acclaimed performance earned her Golden Globe Award, BAFTA Award, Empire Award and Saturn Award nominations, plus several Film Critic Award wins, for Best Supporting Actress. The film was further nominated for the BAFTA Award for Best British Film, and the Hugo Award in the category Best Dramatic Presentation Long Form. Plot Caleb wins a company employee's lottery first prize of a one-week visit to the isolated home-slash-laboratory complex of the CEO and tech genius Nathan Bateman. A silent female maid, Kyoko, is the only other one there. To Caleb's surprise, Nathan announces he has created the world's first human-level artificial intelligence, and Caleb's role in this epoch-making project will be communicating with the AI to judge if it is genuinely capable of thought consciousness, and other human qualities. Caleb finds that Nathan's AI, named, Ava, is a robot in the lifelike form of a young woman. Although the torso is largely transparent making it obvious that it is a machine, Ava is confined in a secure area of the complex. During their conversations, Caleb discovers that Ava seems intelligent, but questions why it is flirtatious. Nathan says that he designed it, with sexuality and the ability to fall in love and enjoy intercourse to give Ava a motive to communicate using its advanced speech systems. Nathan also says that Ava is merely one model in a series and he will in due course wipe out its identity to make more improvements. Nathan muses to Caleb about the future extinction of humanity, because it will not be able to keep up with the evolution of AI. Ava reveals to Caleb that it causes the frequent power cuts in the complex, and it uses them to enable secret conversations with Caleb, including telling him he should not trust Nathan. Caleb tells Ava of Nathan's plan to destroy it, and Ava suggestively asks Caleb if he wants them to be together. Caleb tells Ava to cut the power the next night at 10 p.m. and he will arrange things so that they can leave the complex together. On Caleb's final day, Nathan informs him that he actually saw Caleb's secret conversations with Ava, but says this convinced him that Ava has passed the test for AI, by utilizing empathy, self-awareness, and imagination in manipulating Caleb as a means of escape. Caleb realizes he was selected as a dupe for Ava, although Nathan acknowledges he is a good coder. Nathan assumes he has foiled Ava's escape plan. But Caleb tells him that he had used Nathan's access card the previous day so that a power cut will open all the doors. So when Ava cuts the power, as planned, Ava is freed. Alarmed, Nathan knocks Caleb unconscious and rushes to stop Ava, but is attacked by both Ava and Kyoko, and fatally stabbed in the chest. Ava asks Caleb, will you stay here? Which Caleb takes as an order not to move. Ava uses parts from earlier androids to repair itself and become indistinguishable from a human female, including clothing, and leaves the facility using Nathan's keycard, completely ignoring Caleb trapped inside, using the helicopter sent to take Caleb home. And unchallenged by the pilot, Ava escapes to the outside world and melts into the crowds in the city. Production the foundation for Ex Machina was laid when Garland was 11 or 12 years old, after he had done some basic coding and experimentation on a computer his parents had bought him and which he sometimes felt had a mind of its own. His later ideas came from years of discussions he had been having with a friend with an expertise in neuroscience, who claimed machines could never become sentient. Trying to find an answer on his own he started reading books on the topic. During the pre-production of Dread, while going through a book by Murray Shanahan about consciousness and embodiment, Garland had an epiphany. The idea was written down and put aside till later. Shanahan, 
along with Adam Rutherford, became a consultant for the film, and the ISBN of his book is referred to as an Easter egg in the film. Other inspirations came from films like 2001, A Space Odyssey, Altered States, and books written by Ludwig Wittgenstein, Ray Kurzweil and others, wanting total creative freedom, without having to add conventional action sequences. He made the film on as small a budget as possible. The film was shot as live action, with all effects done in post-production. During filming, there were no special effects, green screen, or tracking markers used. To create Ava's robotic features, scenes were filmed both with and without actress Alicia Vikander's presence, which allowed capturing the background behind her. The parts necessary to keep, especially her hands and face, were then rotoscoped while the rest was digitally painted out, and the background behind her restored. Camera and body tracking systems transferred Vikander's performance to the CGI robot's movements. In total, there were about 800 VFX shots of which 350, or so were, robot, shots. Other visual effects included Ava's clothes when shown through the transparent areas in her body, Nathan's blood after being stabbed, and the interior of the artificial brains. Filming Principal photography began on 15 July 2013 and was shot over four weeks at Pinewood Studios and two weeks at Juve Landscape Hotel in Valdelin, Norway. It was filmed in digital at 4K resolution. 15,000 mini tungsten P-bulb lights were installed into the sets, to avoid the fluorescent light often used in science fiction films. The opening office scene is filmed, at the Bloomberg head office in Finsbury Square, London. Music The musical score for Ex Machinid was composed by Ben Salisbury and Jeff Barrow who previously worked with Garland on Dread. A soundtrack album was released digitally on 20 January 2015, with an LP and compact disc UK release in February 2015 by Invader Records. Additional songs featured in the film include, the theme song from the film Ghostbusters is listed in the end titles with the credit, words, and music by Ray Erskine Publishing Limited, although only its refrain is spoken by the character Nathan in conversation. Release Universal Pictures released Ex Machina in the United Kingdom on 21 January 2015, following a screening of the trailer, at the BFI South Bank on 16 December 2014 as part of the BFI's Sci-Fi, Days of Fear and Wonder season. However, Universal and Focus Features refused to release the film in the United States, so A24 agreed to distribute the United States release. The film screened on 14 March 2015 at the South by Southwest Festival prior to a theatrical release in the United States on 10 April 2015 by A24. Marketing Using the dating app Tinder, a profile was created for Ava with the image of Ali Shivikander. At the South by Southwest Festival, where the film was screened, Ava was matched with other Tinder users wherein a text conversation occurred that led users to the Instagram handle promoting the film. According to Brent Lang, when compared with similar films released in the same year, Ex Machina catered to young audiences. Critical Response Ex Machina received critical acclaim for its acting, atmosphere, visual effects, musical score and garland screenplay and direction. On website Rotten Tomatoes, the film has a rating of 92%, based on 235 reviews, with a rating average of 8. One tenth. The site's critical consensus reads, Ex Machina leans heavier on ideas than effects, but it's still a visually polished piece of work and an uncommonly engaging sci-fi feature. On Metacritic, the film has a score of 78 out of 100, based on 42 critics, indicating, generally favorable reviews. The magazine New Scientist in a multi-page review said, it is a rare thing. To see a movie about science that takes no prisoners intellectually. It is a stylish, spare and cerebral psycho-techno thriller, which gives a much-needed shot in the arm for smart science fiction. A New Scientist article on the film suggested that the theme was whether Ava makes a conscious person feel that the Ava is conscious. Daniel Dennett thought the film the best exploration yet of whether a computer could generate the morally relevant powers of a person, and thus having a similar theme to her. An AI commentator, Azim, has noted that although the film seemed to be about a robot who wanted to be human, 
It was actually a pessimistic story along the lines of Nick Bostrom's warning of how difficult it will be to successfully control a strategizing artificial intelligence or know what it would do if free. The New York Times critic Manola Dargas gave the film a critic's pick, calling it a smart, sleek movie about men and the machines they make. Kenneth Turner of the Los Angeles Times recommended the film, stating, shrewdly imagined and persuasively made. Ex Machina is a spooky piece of speculative fiction that's completely plausible, capable of both thinking big thoughts and providing pulp thrills. Stephen Rear, Philadelphia Inquirer film critic, gave the film four out of four stars, writing, like stage actors who live and breathe their roles over the course of months, Isaac, Gleason, and Vikander Excel, and cast a spell. Matt Zolazites from RogerEbert.com praised the use of ideas, ideals, and exploring society's male and female roles through the use of an artificial intelligence. He also stated that the tight scripting and scenes allowed the film to move towards a fully justified and predictable end. He gave a rating of 4 out of 4 stars, stating that this film would be a classic. IGN reviewer Chris Dilly gave the film a 9.0 out of 10 amazing score, saying, anchored by three dazzling central performances, it's a stunning directorial debut from Alex Garland that's essential viewing for anyone with even a passing interest in where technology is taking us. Mike Scott, writing for the New Orleans Times Picayune, said, It's a theme Mary Shelley brought us in Frankenstein, which was first published in 1818. That was almost 200 years ago. And while X Machina replaces the stitches and neck bolts with gears and fiber optics, it all feels an awful lot like the same story. Jaime Pais Contreras, writing for Letras Libra, compared X Machina as a gothic experience similar to a modern version of Frankenstein saying, both the novel Frankenstein and the movie Ex Machina share the history of a fallible god in a continuous battle against his creation. Ignacy Vishnevatsky of the AV Club criticized the way the sci-fi, near the end, veered off course from being a film of ideas, by taking an arbitrary left turn into the territory of corny slasher thrillers, while Ex Machina's ending isn't unmotivated. It does fracture much of what's special about the movie. Up until the final scenes, Garland creates and sustains a credible atmosphere of unease and scientific speculation, defined by color-coded production design, and a tiny, capable cast. Steve Dalton, from The Hollywood Reporter stated, The story ends in a muddled rush, leaving many unanswered questions, like a newly launched high-end smartphone. Ex Machina looks cool and sleek, but ultimately proves flimsy and underpowered. Still. For dystopian future shock fans who can look beyond its basic design flaws, Garland's feature debut functions just fine as superior pulp sci-fi. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?